So in today's talk, I will cover uh, the idea of Python testing and test coverage and continuous integration and the slow test challenge we faced in a large Python code base. Also talk about the optimization strategies we used to solve the problem. At the end, I will share some results, recap, and do Q&A. We at Zip, a procurement software as a service provider startup to help our customer make a purchase easier and more cost effective. Our customers, including businesses in technology, bank, and many other areas. And we have a large Python code base with a lot of developers and we are still hiring fast. We have more than two and a half million slides of Python code and the code base size doubled in uh, doubled every year. With the growth, the number of tests and tech debt are also increasing fast over time. Uh, why we need tests? Uh, we found tests can help developers ensure the quality of their code changes. And tests can also empower developers to make the future refactoring more uh, safer and with higher uh, confidence. The test case can also serve as documentation uh, that are examples of how the code should be used. There are some common metrics help us measure our tests. First, test execution time measures the duration from the test start to the completion of tests. And the reliability measures the frequency of test passed. Uh, past tests versus the failed tests. The test coverage help us measure the proportion of the code covered by tests, which can be useful to measure the quality of the tests. So let's see how we can write tests easy. Uh, in the following slides, I will share some best practice using open source tools. A web link of each tool can be found at the top left. So PyTest is a popular test framework for Python that makes it very easy to write simple and scalable test cases for your code. Uh, for example, you just implement a Python function is even to check whether the input parameter is an even number or not and return a Boolean value as the result. Now we want to test it. To use it by test, we can simply just create a test file with the test underscore prefix and implement uh, test cases as different Python functions also with the test underscore prefix. Then we can use the PyTest command to uh, run the tests. After install the PyTest, we can just run the comments and the output shows the result. The dash VV option is useful for showing the details like which test case are executed and what's their result. In this output, we can see the overall test execution time 0 0.03 seconds and the number of past tests. To measure the test coverage, we can use the PyTest Cove tool. After install the plugin, we can just provide a dash dash cough option to PyTest and the output will show the test coverage information for each source file with the number of covered line and the covered ratio of the file. And at the end, it also shows the overall uh, test uh, coverage, which is 91% in this case. 
to increase the test coverage further, uh, in this example, we can add a new test case for the odd numbers. To ensure the co uh, software quality with frequent development, we usually also implement the continuous integration best practice. The idea is to uh, continuous merge changes into the shared code base while ensuring the quality of the changes. In this practice, developer can submit a pull request for review when their code changes are ready. And a pipeline will run the tests to verify the code changes. And we only merge the pull request after all the tests pass and after it's approved in the code review. So we can ensure the test reliability and test coverage meet the required thresholds. So um, let's look into how to implement a continuous integration uh, using GitHub workflows. We can simply define a config file under the GitHub workflows directory in your code base. Uh, let's say a CI demo file. We specify the trigger events. Uh, here we use the pull request event to run the tests on all the pull request code changes. We also use the push event here to run the uh, tests when the changes are merged into the main branch. And then we can add a job like run PyTest job to do uh, the following steps, including check out the code base, set up Python interpreter with specific version, install Python dependencies using pip install, and then run the PyTest. So this implements a simple continuous integration job. Now let's talk about the challenges we have. We faced the test execution time increases over time in our large code base because of the number of tests is just increases. With more than 10,000 tests, the test execution time is very long. The second is the test, the code base size also doubled uh, every year, which also increases the test coverage measurement overhead. And the number of dependencies of our application also increases. That cost the test will start uh, slower. We have several strategies to help us solve the problem. The first strategy is parallel execution. We can use the PyTest XDist plugin to run tests in parallel on multiple CPU cores. After install the plugin, for example, we can use dash n with a number eight to indicate we want to use eight worker process. Then the PyTest will distribute the test cases to different worker process to run in parallel. We can also use dash and auto to automatically use all available CPU cores. Given n number of CPU, we can speed up the test execution time by a factor of n. Uh, however, at the scale like 10,000 tests, a CPU core with number eight is still not fast enough. So we can also use another uh, plugin PyTest Split to run tests in parallel on multiple runners. After install the extension, we can use the dash dash split and given a um, group uh, like number 10, that means we want to split the tests into 10 different parts. And we want to run the first part uh, on the current runner. So we specify dash dash group number one. With this approach, we can run different parts on different runners. 
let's say we have m number of runners each has n number of cpu we can increase the parallelism by m by n by default the plugin assumes all the tests have the same test execution time when distributing the test cases to different runners but in reality, the test execution time for different test cases are different, and that will cause the unbalanced runner execution time. Um, that means we have to wait until the last runner finish in order to collect the full test results. To fix this issue, we can uh, collect the test duration by using the dash dash store duration option uh, PyTest will provide a .test durations file at the end of the test run. Then when we uh, use the PyTest split, we can just provide a duration file using the dash dash durations path option. So to implement this in a GitHub workflow, we can use the matrix strategy to provide a list of group. Here we provisioned 10 runner and each will receive a different uh, matrix dot group value. So we just provide the variable value to the group option to PyTest. That way we run different group of tests on different runners. So if each runner has eight cores, we will have 80 concurrent test worker processes. The second strategy is to use cache. Before we can run the tests, we need to install the Python dependencies using pip, and pip can be slow when resolving the dependency versions, download and install the dependencies, uh, to speed it up, we can cache the dependencies because we don't have to uh, always install it when the dependency is not updated. And to do that in a GitHub workflow, we can use the cache action. We can provide the hash of the requirements file as the key of the cache. That way we will only rebuild the cache when some dependencies are updated. When the dependencies are not changed, we just reuse the cached installed dependencies. And when um, the requirements file are updated, uh, it will just run the pip install commands to rebuild the cache. So with this approach, we can start the test run faster. In a large code base, this approach can save five to 10 minutes uh, if you have a lot of Python dependencies. And to make the installation in even faster, we can use another tool, UV. Uh, UV uses fast dependency resolution algorithm to uh, resolve the dependency and install the dependency much faster. By default, UV assumes using a vinf. So if no vinf is used, simply provide the dash dash system parameter. We can also cache the non-Python dependencies. For example, uh, we have to install the Python and Node.js interpreters or some database like Postgres, or some system packages like protobuf, compiler, graphbase, and more. Another example is browsers, if you have end-to-end -end tests, like using Playwright framework. To pre-install those, we can use a Docker image. We define the commands to install those dependencies in a Docker file. In this example, we use apt-get install command to install Postgres and protobuf compiler. 
then we can build the image and publish it to a registry like Docker Hub. And then in the GitHub workflow, we can specify the image source to be used in, in your uh, workflow job. So you can get all the pre-installed non-Python dependencies. And this approach could save 10 minutes or more if you have a lot of non-Python dependencies that needs to be installed. The next strategy is to skip unnecessary computing. We can skip unnecessary tests and interruns if we uh, check uh, the specific code changes and only run the specific tests. For example, your code change uh, your code base may have uh, front end and back end code, and you may only run the backend changes when there's backend, but you may only run backend tests when there's backend changes. So in the GitHub workflow, we can use the changed file action and specify a pattern uh, like this to detect all the Python file changes. We can also export the result of this action as a output value has pie changes that can be reused by uh, all the other uh, test jobs. Uh, for example, in our run PyTest job, we can specify we will need the result of changed file, and we only run PyTest when the has Py changes is true. So with this, we can um, skip the unnecessary test runs or linter runs. So uh, we can further extend this idea. Uh, for example, uh, for some linters, we can only run on the updated files if the code changes will not impact the non-updated files, uh, like Flake or other linters. They can make those linters run even faster. And further extend the idea, we can also try to modulize our code base if you have a monolith. That way, uh, you can use a build system to run even fewer change, uh, test changes when the code change is within a isolated uh, modules. Next, we can skip uh, the unnecessary code coverage analysis. As we mentioned, uh, the coverage analysis could be overhead could be large in a large code base. By default, the dash dash cough measures the coverage for all the files in the project, and it can be so. We can just provide the dash dash cough equal to updated path for each of the updated paths on a pull request in order to only measure the updated files that can uh, reduce the measurement overhead a lot. By doing this, uh, we saved uh, more than one minute in our code base. The last but not least strategy is to use uh, modern runners. One interested finding about GitHub workflows uh, was um, it's slow and expensive when you have a large scale tests. So we found um, there are several third party hosted runner providers, they offer new generation CPU memory runners to run your tests uh, faster and cheaper. Uh, here are some examples, Namespace, BioJet, Actuate, and more. For us, we would like to have the full control and customized runner. So we use self-hosted runner with auto-scaling. We used the 
actions from the controller open source tool to deploy a auto scaling runner on our Kubernetes cluster. We use AWS EC2 with custom hardware specifications based on our load of traffic. We choose the memory size and CPU generation carefully to ensure the performance. And as a result, we achieved 5x cost saving and 2x faster test speed compared to GitHub hosted runners. So with all the different uh, strategies and optimizations, we were able to continuously optimizing our CI pipeline to improve our test execution time and enhance the developer experience. Um, as you can see from this chart, the test execution time uh, was initially over 30 minutes uh, and we were able to uh, optimize it to become under 15 minutes. And you can see this chart is going up and down. And it's because the test execution time will just become slower over time when developers add more tests. So we must continuously apply our strategies to optimize it in order to maintain a good experience. And in the meantime, we also increased the test coverage number from 50% to 60% in the past year. That ensured uh, better co-quality in our code base. So um, <laughs> let's do some recap. So we shared our four strategies for scaling slow tests in a large code base, parallel execution, caching, skipping unnecessary computing, and modernizing runners. And um, by thinking through those strategies, we were able to continuously finding more opportunity um, over time to continue optimize our uh, CI pipeline. Um, thank you for your attention. Um, so we are safe. If you are interested in our other engineering work, you can find on our engineering blog. We also have some job opportunities. If you are interested, you can follow those things. Um, now we have some time for Q&A. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Now I would like to invite anyone from the crowd who has a question to line up behind any of those two awesome microphones and ask away. In the meantime, I do have a question. So you were talking about the coverage and the, there's a percentage. Uh, what's the point, what's the percentage where you start to feel comfortable in your code base and safe? Um, yeah, as you can see, we end up reach 86% uh, coverage at this moment. And we do that by requiring having uh, at least 75% of code coverage on each pull request code changes. Um, and that's the number we feel comfortable. Um, over time, we are also doing a lot of automatic refactoring to take all the tech debt problems. And we found those tests are very useful to detect uh, code change failures. Um, yeah, so I would suggest 75% or even better 80% as a threshold if you want to enforce some check on your pull request. Brilliant, thank you. And we have a question from the crowd. Yeah, uh, very nice talk, thank you. Um, uh, I understood that for speeding up the testing, you just uh, check the coverage for the modified files. Uh, if doing that, mm -hmm. and that, I guess this is um, kind of only checking the coverage of, of these files, I guess you are mm -hmm. also doing a, an overall code 
uh, testing uh, where you, f you do a full testing with a full te uh, coverage uh, check. Is it like, like this? Um, yeah, so what um, the tests are run um, when uh, the pull request is submitted. Uh, that means we have some updated files and that tests, we only measure the co-coverage on the updated files to be, to be able to provide a signal faster to our developers. And after the code change is reviewed and passed the test, when we merged it into the main branch, we will uh, run the test coverage measurement on the entire code base files in order to keep track of the overall test coverage uh, over time as a quality matrix. And also, uh, you may want, also want to uh, publish the full test coverage uh, reports uh, because that's useful for the co-owners to understand the coverage of the, the code they owned to have some uh, quality improvements plan. Okay, so in that case, uh, when you do the full test, uh, how long is, is that test where you test the full code with um, 10,000 of, of, of tests and so on? Yeah, just yes, to have an idea. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I do have one more question. So if you have a expensive test, for example, in your test code base, uh, what is the best way to kind of exclude them from the usual run if you want to run them only occasionally, like marking them or offloading them to a specific file? Um, so, so, sorry, um, uh, let me try to understand your questions. Uh, you, are you talking about you have some tests that you only want to run occasionally? Yes, like they're Not heavy, always. expensive. Yeah, so ideally you want to run the tests when they, the corresponding code are updated. Um, yes, and um, I, so I wouldn't suggest uh, skip them just because they are too expensive. Yeah, unless um, the change, the tests may uh, change by some external factor. For example, they are testing the integration to the third party systems or uh, some conflicts may change over time. Um, that way you could potentially set up some periodic uh, tests. Uh, I have also seen uh, in some other code base, uh, they have the tests that are just too expensive, too slow, and their developers cannot afford to run uh, them on each pull request change. Uh, in that uh, code base, they did set up a recurring job to run the tests every few hours and then use the result to fight the uh, failures. Yeah, but I think this approach is less efficient because you will only find the test failure after the code is merged into the main branch, which the developer will require extra effort to fix the errors. Okay. So I, I think the most, most efficient way is to still to run the uh, updated code changes tests whenever you submit a change. Okay, thank you very much. We have maybe quest uh, one question left, but really quick one. Okay, uh, thank you for the talk. I wanted to ask if you have some tests which cannot run in the parallel and how you tackle them, for example, those which uh, you know are in the conflict or can share some object which can get messed up if uh, the two tests in parallel approach that same object. Um, yeah, so we used the PyTest XDist 
and the split plugins to run tests in parallel. And with that approach, uh, we do find uh, some tests, they shared the state. And the execution order could cause test failure. Those are flaky tests. And um, as the te uh, test uh, number grows over time, there are more flaky tests. So we actually have some required uh, sorry, retry uh, steps in our test pipeline uh, to uh, verify the flakiness of the tests. And uh, we have uh, some workload to report the flaky tests to the co-owners to get their attention, to get them fixed so they don't block the developers. Uh, we also automatically quarantine the flaky tests when it's blocking the code changes. Thank you very much. This is all the time allows. A big hand for Jimmy. Thank you for your attention.